All right, so right now we're starting chapter two, practices C and D, continuing those sketching fundamentals. This first practice will involve us looking at how to use the tool Revolve. So we're going to create that feature like you see in the practice next to you. Uh, you're going to make a new part. When you make this new part, make sure that this new part is in metric, right? Millimeters. And you can do that either by clicking uh, on the standard part and making sure it has the correct units, or you can go into your document settings dialog box and actually change that and you'll see where I verify that here in a little bit. It's under the Tools tab in the ribbon access bar. All right. Now, as I expand the toolbar, make sure my interface is good. There's your two main things, Document Settings, Application Options. So I'm going to go into my Document Settings, change it to Millimeter just to make sure and uh, expand my origin planes because these reference features, these origin planes are what you're going to base everything off of uh, every time you sketch. So notice how I'm just moving through similar to how you would on your tutorials uh, starting to click project geometry here. Project geometry actually takes existing things and p makes them lines inside of your sketch. So say for instance I want to show a line for the YZ or the XZ I just click project geometry and click those two. Once I say OK it'll leave those as yellow lines. Now I'm going to create a feature that looks a sketch that looks like the sketch in the bottom left of the window Remember, don't sketch too specific, just try and make it look like it, and we'll dimension it later, or constrain it. So I can right-click here, and say OK, and that'll finish my sketching. Now I go to the next page. And this is where we're going to look at dimensioning, right? We can do general dimensions where we actually start attributing dimensions to this sketch to constrain it and give it rules. Otherwise, it could be anything. So we want to give it rules. And I'm just going to start dimensioning this to illustrate and match the dimensions shown on the tutorial practices. typing in the dimensions as I move along. So I'm going to dimension. You can dimension lines. You can also dimension to a point, right? So if I wanted to just get the edge of a triangle to the back leg, I can change that as well. Now I'm just verifying my sketch is accurate. and then click OK once you're done. Alright, now what we're going to do is go to our home tab in the view cube, take a look at some of this, and we're going to revolve this sketch. So, if you go to the 3D model tab and you go to the revolve function, right, you're going to select a closed Profile. Your sketch has to be closed. You can't just revolve a line. You have to revolve a closed shape. So, for instance, we're going to revolve this shape around that vertical axis right there. So we've already selected the profile. It knows because there's only one closed profile. And we're going to rotate that around the axis. And you can rotate it a couple ways, but we want to rotate it the way that makes it look like the, the illustration shown. So for instance, here, that would be the y-axis, right? So when I click y-axis, there, I can rotate it. Now in the rotate box, just like any box, you'll be able to, with the, with the extrude or 3D commands, you have an, a 3D grip, which is the little arrow you see, the big, the big orange arrow. And that arrow actually lets you change things about the the revolve or the feature on the fly so that you can see what it looks like. However, in our case right here, it's a full rev revolution, right? It's not a half or quarter revolution, it's a full revolution. 
Okay, now you would save your file. Make sure you save it to your My Documents with some kind of name, right? In a folder for Chapter 2 or call it Chapter 2C, but name it appropriately. And that would be it for Chapter 2C. Now we're going to go on to D, right? All right, now, Practice 2D is going to be focusing on creating these primitive shapes shown, right? We're actually trying to just make these four different shapes however you'd make them. There's no right or wrong way as long as you end up with shapes that look like those. So I'm going to start a new sketch once again. I'm going to sketch on the YZ and I'm just going to start sketching some of these profiles. Now look, I'm just going to sketch first off the top left one and I'm just going to sketch roughly the shape that it looks like. There's no right or wrong answer as long as it looks like the appropriate shape. Finish the sketch. Right from here we have a basic sketch. We can extrude that sketch using the extrude command. Give it some reasonable height so it looks like the image. And there's step one, right? Now we're going to go on to the next one. The next easiest one, I think, is the lower one right here, this bottom left one. To start this bottom left one, instead of sketching like we were on the flat, like we were sketching on a table or something, we want to sketch in the vertical plane now, because this is a U-shaped piece, right? It's essentially a U that's extruded. So I'm going to sketch on the YZ, and I'm going to sketch that U profile, just trying to keep looking, make it look like what it looks like on the page. Nothing specific. Make sure your things kind of line up if you can. And as we move into the next chapter, chapter 3, you'll be able to better detail and understand some sketching basics where we talk more about constraints, dimensions, so on and so forth. Okay. So extrude that profile. You can change the extrusion type right there with symmetric, asymmetric, or whatever you'd like. So I did symmetric. And now we're going to do the cylinder, right? It's just a cylinder with a hole in it. Same, same sketching scenario. We're going to sketch in the, the same plane, right? The YZ. Or we can click on a surface. And we could sketch like how that surface is if we really wanted to. And we'll get into that next chapter where you can pick a face and sketch in the area of that face. So I clicked a face. I'm just going to make a circle. Any circle, any size. And instead of making another circle inside, I'm going to use the offset command. The offset command makes a copy that is parallel or keeps the relationship from the original center or the circle. So. I was going to pick a dimension here, but I think as long as you go with something that just looks like the shape. So see, that one didn't work too well, so I'll stretch that one. Undo, control Z, remember, undo, or you can click at the top left of your screen. And then offset just some small dimension. Finish sketch, and extrude that. Notice how the sketch is not in the middle of the object, but it's actually on the face of the other square where we started our sketch from. Extrude it, and we're done. Now, I'm going to place this sphere, but in order to do the sphere and to have that revolve, I'm actually going to move my original extrusion, right? That very first one I made, I'm going to open up that sketch, and I'm going to move it out of the way, because it'll make it a lot easier when we do a revolve to do the revolve based on the origin plane or the origin of the, the coordinates that we're using, the coordinate axes. So I'm going to highlight all these lines, hovering a window around them, and then I click Base Point. And when you click Base Point, it lets you move the sketch, and when I finish the sketch, it'll move all the adjoining sketches. Now, the reason that cylinder moved is because I, I sketched on the face of the block to make the cylinder. It wasn't sketched on the X, Y, or Y, Z plane. So, back to the sphere. So to make the sphere, we're going to create an arc with thickness that is around the Y, or the X, or Z axis, but only the axis. So, 
I'm going to zoom to my origin. I'm going to pick arc. But instead of three point arc, I actually want to do center point arc because the center of my sphere is going to be the origin. So you're going to click one for the center, drag out, make a circle, and then just complete that circle halfway. Once you complete that circle halfway, we want to make an offset line off of that circle. So we click offset and give it some thickness. Nothing major, because you're not going to see this thickness when we revolve it. And now you're going to close the profile, because it won't extrude or revolve without it being closed, and finish the sketch. Now, now that we've finished that sketch, we want to revolve that profile about an axis. And so once again, we go back to Revolve. We pick Revolve, and then you're going to pick the x-axis. And once you revolve around the x-axis, do my narrations. You can pick your 3D grip handle and test your revolve if you'd like, or you can make it look like a Pac-Man. And you're going to complete the revolve, save your file, and place to your My Documents.